You're now listening to the sound of a show update. Sound of Sanity is the show. The progenitors of the show are as follows. You got Nathan Aaron Alberson, your humble and obedient host. <laughs> Why did that make you snicker? That wasn't snickering. That was a good-natured, silent chuckle. Why did you good-naturedly silent chuckle? I, cause, because of the word progenitor. It just made me chuckle silently. Oh, uh, well. I guess that's what I was going for, come to think of it. You win. <laughs> Why else would I say progenitor if not know. to make people silently chuckle? Yeah. Ah, the silent chuckle. Well, what better way to start a show than with some <laughs> silent chuckles? <laughs> what better way to start a show, period? You know what? Let's, let's restart the show. My name is, this is Sound of Sanity. I am Nathan. I am your humble and obedient host. We've got the preacher who's a teacher of sanity. His name is Ben Solzer for you and me. I don't know what he's <laughs> called by other people. But <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Ben. Hey, Nathan. You excited? Yeah. Good. Can't help it. Why don't you introduce the third guy? The pastor who's a master of sanity. That's him. Jake Menzel. Yeah, Jake Menzel. Me. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> For half a second, I thought, whoa, did Nathan rename me? Preacher who's a teacher? Is... Oh, yeah. No, no. Oh, no, 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 yeah. That's ben, whole thing. Ben, ben, yeah, yeah, he's... Leveled up. Yeah. Level up. Level on up. Up to the east side. That's from the Jeffersons. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I say to that. <laughs> well, folks. Not, never watched the Jeffersons, Ben. No. <laughs> Jake, I haven't. Ben famously uh, will not refuses to watch anything that has black people <laughs> in any kind of position of power or wealth. Hey. Racist. That's, that's neither here nor there, Nathan. But once again, folks, we're, we're off to a swimming start for this podcast. Hey, let's talk about uh, Gay Robin. Oh, yeah, that's the thing that happened. What if, what if that was what we were going to talk about today? I don't know what we would say. That's bad, and this is why you shouldn't let your kids read the comic books. Don't let your kids read comic. Take it from someone who used to read comic books. Mm. Comic books, for whatever reason, I'm not quite sure I've ever wrapped my head around why this is, but they are generally about 20 years ahead of the curve. They are in, gross. In terms of violence and depravity and sexuality. They're always, like, movies, I guess, I guess it's just because they can be niche enough. They don't have to reach the same audience that a movie does. Is because you have an association as parents with comic strips, and you don't have the patience to sit down and look through the things, and it's colorful and splashy and attractive to kids in a way that parents just aren't going to mess with it, and so they know they can get to your kids. Yeah. And they can put whatever they want in there, and they're not going to get a lot of outcry or a lot of care or concern, and so they push the envelope. It's true. Yep. Yep. Yeah, those kind of, like those ultra violent movies like Wanted and Kingsman and things like that that are just really depraved. Those are like the tip of the iceberg of No kidding. Uh, like like if you read the comics of those, they're a thousand times worse. I mean I was I I was reading comic like back in the eighties they did Watchmen and Dark Knight and stuff kind of famous legacy titles now that are so much more like just now we're beginning to be as violent and depraved as those titles were yeah. back in the day. Yeah. And then we could we could litigate the art of Watchmen or whatever some other time, but just know those things are pretty pretty intense, pretty HBO. Mm -hmm. So <sighs> comics. Don't let your kids read them. Get Tintin books from the library, like I did as a child, and try and make your mom read them to you for all your five year olds that are listening. Get a Tintin book. Your mom will be incredibly frustrated having to read the dense, ethnically diverse <laughs> <laughs> names and places. names and places and dialogue and the long balloons of people saying inane junk. And she will be mad because Captain Haddock is an alcoholic and it is portrayed <laughs> as hilarious. <laughs> you know how funny alcoholics are. They're always drinking and it makes them do silly things. <sighs> Captain Haddock's kind of like that. But Tintin rules. People, everyone should read Tintin. That's, that's great. That's the sound of sanity. Guarantee, and the art is just beautiful. And Tintin, Her Herge, how'd you say? How do you say that guy? I name? don't know. Herge. So Herge. All I know of Tintin is the Spielberg thing, and that's cool. Yeah, Spielberg thing's cool, but I would argue it doesn't touch the top comic Tintin. Tintin was, was just really great. I wish they'd make more movies. I'd watch more of those movies, and I hate motion capture the, that style. I've never liked it either. But Tintin came the closest to maybe making it work. I don't know. Maybe we just overall. fantastic, Mr. Fox. Well, that's a uh, that's the that's uh, a stop motion. That's stop motion. Oh, yeah. Okay, is it? Yeah, that's. Uh, it's been a minute since I've seen. Yeah. Then I kind of lumped those together. Oh, that's an interesting I lump, like stop lump together. I like some stop motion. I like Wallace and Gromit. Yeah. 
<laughs> it there's a uh, I don't know what it is. There's just this like the separation from stylized animation mm-hmm. or CGI that both kind of live in an uncanny place in my mind. I guess. Yeah, I can see that stop motion is kind of creepy when you see it and you're not and your brain is so used to the fluid motion of cgi Mm -hmm. and suddenly you you notice like all the little bristles like on king kong's fur they move every time because somebody's grabbing his arm and Mm -hmm. twisting it it's it takes some readjusting like our brains aren't really quite in that wheelhouse anymore although i saw something really neat where someone took old stop motion like ray harryhausen i think it was clash of the titans which is a horrible movie but anyway they added one of those dumb filters that your modern tv will put over where it makes everything it motion smooths everything and adds yeah. frames and, and it makes everything look like a sitcom or a, a soap opera and yep. it mm-hmm. looks terrible mm-hmm. and everybody hates it and likes to dunk on it you guys know about that yes yep. know all about you, it you guys know about those so somebody did that kind of motion for an old ray harryhausen thing and it was really cool because he suddenly added this this fluidity that we're used to motion in movies having instead of a series of still shots without the reason that a lot of stop motion, I know this is what people tune into here on Sound of Sanity. Mm-hmm. The reason a lot of stop motion reads as weird is because it doesn't have motion blur, which is what we're used to. Real life actually doesn't have motion, motion blur, blur exactly, yeah. <laughs> but we're just used to motion blur at 24 frames a second. And so we miss it when stop motion doesn't have it. CGI does provide it. But now with d- modern digital technology, you can go back and add motion blur to like a Ray Har- Harryhausen thing and it makes it look kind of weird and creepy and cool so there you go medusa is actually moving those uh tentacles medusa is moving those tentacles baby i think we have the title of the episode (laughs) (laughs) and speaking of tentacles we have tentacles all over the place doing all kinds of (laughs) cool jobs (laughs) we're we're like specter (laughs) we have tentacles everywhere (laughs) like a james bond villain we have tentacles. <laughs> All right, my point is one of our tentacles is making Chip and Lance. <laughs> and it's going to be great. We have the new season of Chip and Lance. We're hoping. Should we Should we even give a date? Do we want to underpromise and overdeliver here? Yes. Or <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we do. We could overpromise and underdeliver. You guys want to do that? Nope, not a fan. <laughs> Just for a change of pace. <laughs> <laughs> Just for a change of pace. <laughs> Why don't we do a change of pace and under a promise? So I hope Chip and Lance will be very soon. The We have scripts. We have scripts. I think we're pretty excited about them. Mm-hmm. We've and done read-throughs of the scripts. Mm-hmm. A little bit of a polish and spit and polish needed on. Yeah, still, still things that uh, we want to improve and, and make better before we uh, turn on the mics and go. And we have maybe yeah. three episodes or two episodes. I don't know exactly. We, we have the final arc of the show to... Right. Mm-hmm. But but that means we have how many episodes written? Eight? Yeah, like eight. eight, I, think, eight right? yeah. I think eight. Yeah. yeah. So we've got eight done and then a final arc. Well, and just to excite people and to prepare for for them, this is this is not your your father's <laughs> Chip and Lance show. <laughs> what you got last year with Chip and Lance was oh no, everything's on lockdown and everybody's the kids are out of school and stuck at home and everybody's stuck at home together and we'd better just like Let's just come up with something quick. So we were turning those around fast. It's like write it one day, record it that same day, record it after. Yeah, and we were so we were coming out with a lot of volume, and there were really short episodes, and we managed to pull some things together and make it fun and silly. And I, I, I stand by it. I, I love those I stand episodes by it too. They're fun, but but these are this is a show. Yeah, this is a story show, mm-hmm. and more of a family show. I would say, like uh, try and have something for all ages in there. Yeah, so it's going to be less of the pure slapstick for little kids and more of pure slapstick for little kids and also satire. Some sat, yeah, it's just some some more substance, some more meat on the bones. Yeah, there's a there's, we're telling a real story, and it's a story that we're excited to tell. We're going to talk about some things that make us feel insane in this world of ours. Things that might make your kids feel insane. Yeah, mm-hmm. hopefully give your kids some handles to process things and use some handles to process things with your kids but also just hopefully tell a slam bang story that you'll enjoy with some some i dare say some comedy some some action and adventure some school politics and some possums and some and a whole boatload of possums actually i don't know if there's a literal boatload of possums but there may or may not be a little Mm. but you never know there's still three episodes left to write so yeah 
Yeah. There is now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there are possum drones. There are possum sidecars on motorcycles. I mean, I don't, I don't want to give away everything, but there's a lot of possum related. Everything is possum. Everything is possum. It is, yeah. And Lance is irritated because Chip is like misinterpreting things that he says. And Chip Shocker. is Chip is being funny and surreal. And Sparky's in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Sparky is. We have a. Uh, new, Very two important. New, well, we have a new character to introduce. Yes. And he's a super fun, exciting character. And I would say uh, an inspirational character. Yeah. We love this character. We're super <laughs> excited about him. <laughs> of course, you've already met him. His name is Dr. Buckner. <laughs> no, no, no. That is not who I'm talking about. <laughs> oh. No, if anything, we'll, we'll tease it this much. He is Dr. Buckner's spiritual opposite i would mm-hmm. say he is like the yin to buckner's yang or yeah the light to buckner's the dark. antithesis True. so for all you dr buckner n- nerds out there that have been keeping track and remember who, that is. who that is <laughs> <laughs> this guy is he's a completely if original you don't know his name you'll recognize dr buckner when he yes when if, he appears. if you know the vowel oh, or anything you know our skits over the years you will recognize dr buckner <laughs> and walter and gary are uh, in there quite a bit and mm-hmm. yeah Livy <laughs> Livy Lance's daughter we met her last uh, season or the little the end of season two and yep. we're developing her character she's got a fun arc Chad Chad is in there he's got mm-hmm. a fun arc we're just uh, so we're, I think Laura makes at least one appearance yeah Laura's there she does yeah. who else hi man Andres oh, of course uh, Quentin Seltzer Quentin Seltzer actually has a really good arc yeah, I love I, I Really, that's one of my favorite things about the next season. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So far. If you're a longtime fan, there's a lot. I, I think you could safely turn this on for someone who had no context and they'd, they'd get it and be able to follow what's going on yeah. and enjoy it. But yeah, also, it's written that way. But also, if you have history with some of these characters. This will reward that. Yeah. It'll, it'll be ultra sweet. I would go so far as to say, if you're a Ville fan, yeah. you, you don't want to miss this because... We're checking in with these characters and... It's the same universe. It's so. the same universe. It's the more whimsical side of that universe, uh-huh. obviously, but uh, we won't... We won't. Nobody's going to be in the desert with their arch nemesis uh, <laughs> talking, <laughs> talking about, about the, the, the deepest <laughs> <Yeah>. levels of depravity. <laughs> Underneath the desert moon. <laughs> Underneath the desert moon. That that does not happen on this season <laughs> of our family sitcom or whatever you'd call it, but... Uh, you do need to subscribe to the Chip and Lance show mm-hmm. in order to watch it. Right. Listen to it. Yeah. It, yes. In order to listen. Sorry, not watch it, but in order to listen to it. So it will be a, in a separate feed. Yes. And we'll be sure to make sure that you know that. And if, if you're, yeah, you can actually go ahead and subscribe to the Chip and Lance show right now. You can find it. Yeah. So it's there and all the first season episodes are there and that's where season two will drop and it'll be completely different. But I mean, I assume that's what we're planning to do, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so go ahead and subscribe, go back and Enjoy those episodes with your kids. It's a good way to meet Chip and Lance if you're just meeting them for the first time. Yeah. Kind of understand their their energy, their dynamic. Not that it's all that complicated to figure out, but uh, yeah, this is this is this is one of the things that we've done that I'm the most excited about. I'm really excited about this. So um, yeah, it's really fun. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. So I'm just gonna say it. I'm not afraid to hype it. I think it's the kind of thing that I would have really liked because I remember listening to. It's not like Prairie Home Companion or anything like that, but I do remember enjoying occasionally with my family things like Adventures in Odyssey or Prairie Home, the kinds of things that you could actually just sit down on a, on a weeknight or a Friday night or a Saturday night and just listen to, and ev- there'd be something that everybody can enjoy. Mm-hmm. And I hope if we do our job right, this will be that kind of thing. I'll have some big laughs for the kids, but also some things that adults will be interested in. and It'll just be a full package Get your heart out, Christian entertainment thing that people are excited about. What do you project? Yeah. The, I know we've done read throughs and things, but those are read throughs without effects and things like that. What do you project the length of an episode? I think you're getting a full, like, the length of your favorite half an hour TV show, maybe. So I'm saying those 20 to 25 minutes. Yeah, 20 to 25 yeah. minutes. That so sounds right. Yeah. So, you know, if you have any kind of commute to school or to and from school or something like that, you know, it's the kind of thing you can do in the car. Yeah, this would be great. You can you can do it. You use it however you want to. But I just have nostalgia for the like three times that are, I don't want to pretend like I come from the perfect family that did this all the time. But 
I don't want to pretend like a perfect, it would be a perfect family that would do this, but I, I just have nostalgia for, we're all sitting around the radio and listening to the thing. So if you want to do that and create a memory that your kids will remember and love forever, then <laughs> you're welcome to do that. Yeah. Yeah. By all means do that. Yeah. So, okay. I think we've hyped that enough, but it's not, we're not blowing smoke. This is like, I'm, I'm really excited about this. So what else do we need to talk about? Gay Robin's bad. Chip and Lance is good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Comic books, bad. Comic books, bad. Chip and Lance, good. Tintin, good. Alcoholism, bad. Yeah. Funny silliness. The Chip and Lance, good. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Do we, want to, do we want to tell them the topic of this season of Chip and Lance? Do you think they'd like to know that? Or should we just keep everything under wraps? I don't know. Kind of torn. Just, just let them discover it? Let, let, let them discover it. Because I think it's the kind of topic that if we said it, I don't think the topic sells itself. Mm-hmm. But I think the topic is awesome. No, everyone likes video games, though. I don't know. Oops. <laughs> Whoops. Let the cat out of the bag there, folks. Video games. That's what it's about. Chip and Lance go to a video game world. <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> Video games, whether they're good or bad. That's the topic. Let's, poli- let's, let's just pause here and polish this up here. You had so many choices as far as the fake. You could have gone with like, it's the, it's the meth season. It's the, <laughs> it's, it's the Russian novels. Yeah, just lost on a strange island yep. with mysterious other people. Nope. and Playing video games. i stand by video games i just don't think that that sounds lame enough like (laughs) it uh, doesn't (laughs) my i mean my instinct is always to go dark like the meth oh meth whoops you know that's what i would have done in the same position i meant math (laughs) i meant math yeah (laughs) we will not do the episode on meth folks we will not do the episode on math i'm sure well i hope people are excited i hope they don't read gay robin and he's bi actually i'm sorry it's bi robin (laughs) <laughs> bye. Speaking of which, yeah. <laughs> bye, Robin. Bye, Robin. <laughs> yep. Wow. Bye, bye, Robin. That's from the musical Bye Bye Birdie. You're welcome. One person out there appreciated that reference. Actually, probably zero people appreciated that reference. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know I, I didn't. I got that reference. And I did not appreciate it. it. <laughs> well, you got it. All right. Well, bye, bye, Robin. Who needs you? Bye, bye. <laughs> and if anyone out there is listening, named Robin. Bye bye, Robin. Who needs you? We do. We need you to go to, go to Patreon. <laughs> forward slash <laughs> Sound of Sanity. <laughs> uh, seriously, support this show. Support the Chip and Lance. It's the place to support our creative endeavors like the Ville or Chip and Lance. And uh, you'll get some sanity bites. You'll have access to every single skit we ever did, all in like chronological order. And you can really go back and hear it like when Chip and Lance didn't even sound like Chip and Lance and mm-hmm. don't just mm-hmm. kind of sound like this. and The good old days. The good old days. When Pastor Stu just sounded like this. Pastor Stu went through like a whole yeah, yeah, yeah. progression from vaguely gay to <laughs> <laughs> Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> and don't try to follow Evan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Evan's probably one of the more consistent ones in his way. Yeah. Can't remember. I think Evan went from being me to I think he I think we tried like five different things. Yeah, okay, yeah, you're right. Stone actually came out of the gate as a voice. Like he was he always kind of was a voice, but his yeah. voice got more more I figured out how to do it more. Matt was very different. Yeah. Well, Matt used to be way down here. Now he's more up here. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird to hear some of the early stuff. <laughs> Pastor Mental. <laughs> uh, who's changed the most? I, the Hemanologians, yeah, changed a lot. Oh, huh. yeah, because they just used to be like this. Yeah, I'm BJ. Yeah, I'm AJ. I'm I'm CJ. <laughs> <laughs> now they're muppets. Now they're muppets. Well, yeah. BJ is a muppet. BJ is a muppet, yeah. and AJ's a dude, and CJ just kind of stayed as <laughs> <laughs> Batman. Well, aren't we fun? Don't we do fun things? We are so fun. Mm, okay. Well, Patreon.com. Keep the fun alive. Patreon.com. Mm. <laughs> the he Manologians should appear in Chip and Lance, in my opinion. Well, here's the thing about the he Manologians. They don't have a comfortable resting place right now because they're, they're a little <laughs> bit out there, even for the Ville universe. Yep. But we don't really do skits in the like this feed anymore. Yeah. But that could always change. I don't know. 
Yeah. I just uh, miss them. Know. I miss them too. I think they are some of my favorite characters to write and they're fun and per- <laughs> just to perform. And I mean, the second only to Chip and Lance, the He-Man Elogians. And I know people were so sick of them and hated them, but <laughs> <laughs> I never did. <laughs> uh, my kid's like, yeah, you like, know, every time we, we pass up like BJ's Steakhouse or there's a little pizza parlor on the way to Owensboro, which we sometimes have to drive to Owensboro for soccer tournament or something like that called BJ's Pizza Parlor and they'll Oh BJ's Pizza Parlor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, That's I didn't know that about your kids. Yeah. Wow. Now maybe we could bring them. I don't know. Maybe they just need their own spin off. I they, they need their own children's show. <laughs> they need their own adult <laughs> show. <laughs> I think if I remember correctly, they were they they tended to push the envelope about as much as anything yeah they did yeah they did uh, like when we needed somebody to comment on something that was actually truly wicked for some reason the hemanologians were always like our our go-to um, well the hemanologians are most close to 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 just straight up punching yeah everyone including ourselves they are they are the straight up id they're just the worst impulses of everybody yep there's ways in which we're not actually secretly chip, but we, we might. Uh, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought you were secretly Quentin. <laughs> aww, aww, aww. I thought you were secretly Pastors too. Uh, <laughs> I thought you were nice... secretly Sparky. <laughs> I guess it's okay. <laughs> it's still not very good. Me and Ben are actually Jaime and Andres. That's there you a, go. Uh, that is the deep dark secret. That is the deep dark secret. We're too excitable <laughs> <laughs> Latinos, Latinx people, as they say. <laughs> okay, well, we've talked a lot about ourselves, and that's that's what we like to do. And this is Sound of Sanity. And go to patreon.com forward slash Sound of Sanity to keep the fun going. Keep us talking about ourselves. Keep us making Chip and Lance. You're going to want to after you listen to this season of Chip and Lance. I don't mind hyping it because I think it's worth the hype. It's pretty great. Yeah. It's exciting. Yep. And eh, until next time. Stay sane.